It's a seasonably cool winter day in Sweetwater, Texas. Just three miles west of Fort Worth stands a lonely building that's home to a part of history that for many years has been swept under the rug. It was here on August 5th, 1943, that the WASP program provided an opportunity for women to fly for the first time. WASP is an acronym for Women Air Force Service Pilots. With World War II in full operation, a need for non-combat pilots arose, which created a once-in-a-lifetime chance for women that had never previously been considered. Through the Lens Lease program, we have promised nearly 7,000 aircraft to the Russians. So all those aircraft you know, were being built here, and then they were being, being taken to Russia. And so it, it was just simply more than what our men could do. You know, and so at that point, you're talking about keeping some men at home when they were desperately needed in combat. So it was really desperation. It was an exciting time, as the miracle of flight was still very much in its infancy. Jacqueline Cochran and Eleanor Roosevelt were the driving force behind the movement to put women in the air. The first lady had aspirations of her own to fly, eventually befriending Amelia Earhart. Though she never realized her dream, she was instrumental in convincing those in power to make use of the women who were willing to serve. In one of her columns, she said, you know, this is not a time for America to hold back. You know, we, we need to put out uh, our secret most important weapon, and that weapon is women. I mean, we have women that can fly and they should be flying. And so I think that that is really, that was the tipping point. You know, that the U.S. knew we needed more pilots, they knew women were there and, and potentially able to do it. They weren't convinced women could fly military aircraft. They were very concerned that they didn't have what it would take. But I think their backs were against the wall. The First Lady is saying, you should try, and there it was born. The WASP logged more than 60 million miles and flew every plane the Army Air Forces possessed. And every type of mission a male pilot flew during World War II, with the exception of combat. They delivered more than 12,000 aircraft representing 78 different types to bases throughout the nation. At its height, the program had just over a thousand women pilots, including Shirley Cruz. She is one of the last survivors. Now, a hundred years old, she still remembers the day in 1944 when the dream suddenly came to an end. The program was essentially sealed. It, it wasn't even out there, the information for people to know about. You know, people knew about the Tuskegee Airmen Service, they knew about the Navajo Code Talkers, they knew about WAC but nobody knew about the WASP. It was hidden. And the ladies really accepted it. They, it was a bitter pill to swallow. Some certainly fared much better than others as they headed home, but they went on about their lives. Sadly, the hard work and accomplishments of these pioneers of flight would go unrecognized for several decades. In the 1970s, the Army announced they would be recruiting and training the first women pilots in the military. Well, the WASP didn't like that. They did not appreciate that at all. You know, they said it was one thing to be disbanded and be sent home, but no one's gonna say we weren't the first. Barry Goldwater had a lot to do with getting them their veteran status. He, you know, he had done a lot of the same jobs that they had done. You know, the women kept everything. So they were pulling out their official service records. They had their acceptance letters. They had their discharge papers. They had their log books. They had it all. And he examined it and said, this is just like mine. So he really pushed that over, over the goalpost. And in 1977, Jimmy Carter, very unceremoniously, signed it into law, giving them veteran status. There was no fanfare, no party. In fact, he didn't even invite any WASPs to be there in the Oval Office when it was signed. These pioneers of the sky came from all walks of life, each of them with the same goal, to serve their country in its greatest time of need. They were mothers, daughters, sisters, and proud pilots who are now remembered by a grateful nation for their service as everyday heroes.